Hello, I'm Matt Diablo. Today on The Crime Scene, we're at the studios of CBS Radio in North Baltimore. It's only about a 10 minute drive from here to police headquarters downtown. But for one popular sports talk show host, it's been a long and unusual journey. He arrived in Baltimore like a knight in shining body armor, a 20-year veteran of the New York City Police Department who played a significant role in the 1990s in reducing New York's murder rate to its lowest level in 40 years. A charmingly tough-talking cop's cop who in May of 2000 was sworn in as Baltimore's 33rd police commissioner, tasked by Mayor Martin O'Malley with recreating the so-called New York miracle on Baltimore's increasingly mean streets. And using the same type of targeted, aggressive policing that he helped implement in New York, Ed Norris quickly delivered. Between 2000 and 2002, Baltimore recorded the largest violent crime reduction of any major U.S. city. And Norris was treated like a conquering hero with 21st century touches, like a role in a popular television show, The Wire. And then, in a New York minute, his charm life in Charm City started going south. In December 2002, shortly after the Baltimore Sun revealed Norris's extramarital affairs with several women and his misuse of a little-known police department fund, and with his relationship with City Hall seriously strained, Norris left the police department to head up the Maryland State Police. But that job lasted less than a year because in June of 2004, he was sentenced to six months in federal prison after pleading guilty to federal corruption and tax charges. When he was released from prison, Norris used his continued and considerable popularity in Maryland to piece his life back together. And for nearly 10 years now, he has hosted one of the state's top-rated radio shows. 10 years into your radio career, is it still strange that you're doing this rather than policing? Nah, it's kind of like, I love my police career, and I did it for 25 years, 24 years. And I look back, and now it's kind of, I did that, now I do this. Um, I've got a good second career going. I'm 10 years into this, so it, that's a lot of time. Do you miss being a cop? Mm, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. I miss police work. I don't miss the politics for obvious reasons, but I love, uh, I love jumping fences and taking guns away from bad guys. And I, I miss that kind of stuff. I miss the camaraderie. There's things I really miss about it, but uh, not, the, uh, not life at the top. I love the department. I love the men and women who work there, but after a couple of years of the politics and in particular, I mean, the racial politics, you know, it's so, it was so ridiculous, you know. I just, I got fed up with it. And I said, you know what, I'll go to another police agent, i go to state police. It's tough being an outsider taking over that department, as you well know. Very tough. How do you think Commissioner Batts is handling it? I think he's handling it as well as possible because, especially coming from California, I think that whole, uh, being an outsider is very difficult. Being a New Yorker was very difficult. Being white in Baltimore as a police chief was very difficult. Commissioner Batts, being an outsider is tough as, as well. Being from California is tough. It's a different mindset of policing, different way of policing out there, different part of the country. It's very different than the East Coast. It's a tough transition being an outsider. You're certainly not fully accepted easily. Do you think there's anything the police department isn't doing that they should be doing or something that they are doing that they shouldn't be doing? Uh, hmm. It's tough for me to say because I really, you know, if you're not sitting in the chair, you don't know. But I hope that they're not um, bowing to politics too much. I don't believe in bringing the feds into the department. If you can't police yourselves, you shouldn't be in the business. You bring in another agency because why? That's never a good issue because they never come up empty-handed. So even if things aren't going badly, they'll find something. What's your take on the brutality issue, the videos that have come out? Well, I mean, I've seen two videos. I haven't seen 2,000. And I see the way it's been treated, you would think you saw 2,000 videos of police officers beating people for no reason. I've seen two. And one of them appeared pretty justified to me because I saw a female police officer get knocked on her back. I've got bulletin for people, like it or not, if you hit the police, you're gonna get hurt. I'm sorry, that's the way it works, that's the way it always has worked, it works that way here, it works that way in Berlin, in Paris, it works that way around the world. Don't hit the police, you'll be okay. I'm sorry, I think this is really overblown. You disagree then with the mayor and the commissioner calling in the justice? Absolutely, positively, I think that's a terrible idea. Look into your crystal ball for me if you would and tell me what you're doing in five years. Oh boy, well, uh, if O'Malley wins the presidential election, I'll be on uh, CNN, I guess. And if not, I'll probably be here on the fan doing sports. So that's probably it. And you'd be happy with either of those? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. This isn't a bad business. That's all for this edition of The Crime Scene. Until next week, be sure to get the very latest crime news on The Sun's Crime Beat blog and on Twitter at Baltimore Sun. I'm Matt Jablo.
Thanks for watching.